Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be doing this problem, which is exercise 1.1.9, which can be found in your free online real analysis textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description. This problem says, let S be an ordered set, and A is a non-empty subset such that the supremum of A exists. Suppose there is a B that's a subset of A, such that whenever X is an element of A, then there is an element Y, which is in the set B, such that X is less than or equal to Y. Show that the supremum of B exists and that the supremum of B is equal to the supremum of A. All right, so let's first start this proof by listing off our hypotheses. All right, so let S be an ordered set and A be a non-empty subset such that the supremum of A exists. And suppose that there is a B that's a subset of A such that whenever X is in A, then there is a Y in B such that X is less than or equal to Y. So we need to show that the supremum of B exists. So we need to show that B has an upper bound and that among all of the upper bounds, there is a least upper bound. So we're given a pretty huge hint here. We're literally given what the supremum of B probably is. It's the supremum of A, but we don't get to assume that. We'd have to show that. So first we're gonna show that the supremum of A is an upper bound to B. So first we're gonna grab a random element in B and we're gonna show that the supremum of A is an upper bound, is greater than or equal to this element B here, this arbitrary element B. Well, since B is a subset of A, then B is actually an A as well. And so B is less than or equal to the supremum of A. And why is that? Well, if B is an A, the supremum of A I already know exists. And the supremum of A, by definition, is an upper bound to A, so it's greater than or equal to every element in A, including that element in A. So we just showed that for any arbitrary element in B, this B is going to be less than or equal to the supremum of A. That means that the supremum of A is an upper bound to B. Now I want to clarify something. Why was I able to assume that there is an element in B? Do we get to assume that B is non-empty? Well, not necessarily, but I know that A is non-empty and B is a subset of A such that whenever you have an element in A, then you have an element in B. So since A is not empty, then that means that there is an element in B, which means B is also not empty, which allows me to grab an element from B. I should have clarified that. Now, since A is not empty, let's let A be an element of A. Well, keep in mind that whenever you have an element in A, then there's an, an, an element Y in B such that X is less than or equal to that Y. So there is a C in my set B such that A is less than or equal to C. Now recall that U is an upper bound of B and C is in B. So, so that means that C is less than or equal to that upper bound U, which implies that that element A is less than or equal to my upper bound U. Now recall, now take a look at this. I picked a random arbitrary element A here. And regardless of what element I pick from my set A, that element is gonna be less than or equal to U. That means that U is an upper bound of A as well. So U is an upper bound of A. And this is where things get really cool because we already know that A has a least upper bound. So that least upper bound has to be the least of all the upper bounds of A. But take a look at what we just showed here. If we take any arbitrary upper bound of B, keep in mind U was an upper bound of B originally. That was what we had right here. That U was instantiated as an upper bound of B. 
So the supremum of A is always less than or equal to any arbitrary upper bound of B. And so this means that the supremum of A is the least upper bound. And that's it. So that means that there is a least upper bound. It exists. And that least upper bound for B is the supremum of A. So the supremum of B is the supremum of A. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.